Hey everybody, it's Lon Seibin, and I've been looking for new ways to play my PC games in the house, specifically on handheld devices like this GPD XD I bought about a year or so ago. And a lot of you told me about a really cool app that I hadn't really experimented with until last week called Moonlight, and I've got it running here uh, on the GPD as we speak. And what this lets you do is connect up to an NVIDIA-powered gaming PC and uh, stream your games to it via your wireless network in your home. And it actually works pretty nicely. You're going to see some glitching out uh, at the moment just because my Wi-Fi Wi-Fi signal down here in the studio, at least for this device, is not as strong as it needs to be. So uh, you'll, you'll hear when I go into some of the mechanics about this that you definitely want to make sure you've got a decent wireless, preferably AC, with a good signal in order to really get this to work uh, perfectly on your handheld devices. But uh, I was playing last night in my uh, bedroom where I have a wireless access point in the room and it was really functioning quite nicely here with pretty minimal lag also. So I'm very, very pleased actually with uh, how this is working, especially considering this is a, a free app, not from NVIDIA but uh, from a uh, you know an open source group that's been really playing around with trying to get this uh, NVIDIA game streaming thing to work on uh, different kinds of devices here and it seems to be working quite nicely so we're going to step through all of this now and show you how it works so I've got it running on this device I've got a really high-end phone here this is the new uh, OnePlus 3 so we're going to try it on this one and then I've got my iPad here too so we'll try it with some iOS also but let's first take a look at the app and how it's configured and then we'll go in and see how it works on different devices all right, so I'm going to quit my game here. We're going to go into how all of this stuff works. So we're going to let this quit, and uh, what it will do when you leave your game is it'll tell you what the latency was of the game while you were playing it. It tends to bug out a little bit when I have my uh, device here plugged into my HDMI cord for some reason or another, but uh, it takes a, just an extra second or two for it to exit the game. But when it does, what you'll see at the bottom uh, is a, a readout of essentially what the latency was so you can get a feel for what your settings are doing for the amount of lag you might experience in game. Game. So there we go, the connection has been terminated, that's a normal procedure, and then you'll see that we had a 21 millisecond latency uh, on the H.264 hardware decoder that's built into this device. So the way this works is that your PC is essentially streaming the games over your local network to the device, and Moonlight is collecting your controller input and sending it back to the computer, which of course then gets executed inside the game. Now this is the same protocol that NVIDIA uses for the NVIDIA Shield devices, both their TV device as well as their tablet and I guess their handheld that they've had for a while also. Uh, so it's the same exact thing, except Moonlight is uh, doing that for other devices not made by NVIDIA, like the one that we have here. Uh, but your network is going to be a big part of making all of this work. Now I'm going to show you how the uh, launcher here works in a minute, because I want to focus first, though, on the configuration. So I'm going to back out to the main menu of the app here. I'm going to go over to the settings gear icon, because this is where you really need to spend some time uh, based on what your network is configured as, and it might actually vary by the room that you're in. Uh, so the first thing you'll see here is the target resolution. Now this little uh, GPD handheld only has a 720p display, so I am setting my resolution at 720p at 60 FPS because I don't need more than that to get the game here. That's certainly going to help, especially with this device and others like it that don't have wireless AC. AC wireless is a lot faster than non-AC wireless, so you definitely need to think about that uh, as you're going into your resolution and frame rate setting. Another thing you want to look at is the target video bit rate. So we were running at uh, 10 megabits per second, which is probably a little bit low, but it was good enough to get the game working on here. Uh, you can certainly go way high on this, up to 100 megabits per second, which will probably exceed uh, most wireless connections that you might have. So you definitely want to tweak this. If you're getting a lot of lag, keep reducing it until you get to a point uh, where it functions better than it was. Now the problem you're going to run into with this wireless stuff, especially for game streaming, is that your wireless network's condition might change over time, specifically if there are other people in the house using that wireless connection, uh, it's going to invade your space essentially. There's only so many packets that these uh, wireless networks can handle at a time. So the more activity on your network that's happening, uh, the slower your game is going to get. So you might want to install your own access point just for this so that uh, there's no other interference from other users that might uh, come into play on here. There's a few other settings on here that aren't as important, but uh, you can adjust all, all of the things like controller inputs and uh, the user interface languages. And there's also an H.265 setting, uh, which allows you to use uh, less bandwidth, uh, but get the same quality video that you might have. And that's where the OnePlus 3 comes into play, because that does support H.265 video. I can get a better quality image with less network bandwidth. So I could turn that bandwidth down a little bit, but not really lose any image quality over uh, what we have here on the GPD. So there are things that you really want to tweak and experience
experiment with as you're uh, getting everything working and just know that depending on what room you're in, how uh, good the connection is in each room, you might have to adjust settings based on where you are. It's really uh, kind of a dark art to get uh, some of this stuff working from time to time, but just keep that in mind as you go. Now the way this works when you first configure it is if you have the NVIDIA experience or the GeForce experience software configured on your network, uh, this device and whatever other device is running Moonlight will find those devices on your local network automatically. Now the first time you connect the device to the computer, the computer is going to want you to put in a code so it knows that the connection is authorized and after that uh, everything just works. Now uh, when I click on my gaming rig here, you'll see that I've got a bunch of games that are already uh, set to load. So this is running with the NVIDIA launcher and what NVIDIA does is it goes out to your hard drive and finds games that are compatible with its game streaming protocol. Uh, there are though ways to run Steam games that might not be officially supported just by loading up Steam. And if you have Steam installed in your computer, it should find it uh, automatically here. I'm going to establish my connection to Steam here. It's going to execute it on the desktop computer and everything should start up here. It's going to run a little bit laggy right now because the handheld is outputting through my HDMI, but uh, you'll get the idea here. So I can go into my uh, installed games here and you'll see I have access to a lot more than I did before. Uh, some games will work okay, others will not. For example, iKaruga here did not work with uh, uh, the controller on my Android device, but um, games like Mighty Number no. 9 do. So it's just a matter of finding what uh, works by experimentation. Some games just won't work at all, and you'll just have to uh, play them on your local computer, but many others, even though they're not showing up on the NVIDIA launcher, uh, will be launchable through Steam. Now I've been experimenting quite a bit with this over the last couple of days and I found that the GPD experience to be the best one uh, provided you have a good wireless connection. And the reason is that uh, there's very minimal input lag because the controller is already hardwired to the device. It makes a big difference here. You're seeing a little bit of network lag again, but uh, look at the input delay. There really isn't much of one at all, uh, just given the fact that, uh, again, we're not dealing with a Bluetooth latency over to the device and then dealing with the network latency. You've got a direct hardwired connection, so a little bit less lag and it was just a little bit noticeable on some of my other devices. But let's take a look now and see how it works on a mobile phone and then we'll check out my iPad. All right, so we've got out our OnePlus 3 now and I have it connected to a GameSir controller. We're gonna take a look at this in the next couple of days, but a rather neat controller. And uh, what we're gonna do here is turn up some of the settings because we have a better network connection. This supports wireless AC uh, and we also have the uh, greater resolution of the display on here. We have a 1080p display. So I'm gonna set this to 1080p 60. We're also going to set the target bit rate at 40 megabits per second. We'll see if it works. Uh, we'll back out of here, connect to the gaming rig and then we'll uh, maybe pop back into Steam and load up that same game we just looked at and see how it performs. Now what's going to happen here is because this phone uh, supports H.265, that will be the default that uh, this, uh, this will use now in order to get the video over to the phone for our gameplay purposes here. So we'll click on the library here, we'll go back to the game we were just playing and play that back and see what happens here. So let's give this a second. Now one thing I like about having a regular controller is that uh, all the buttons are in the right place. The only issue is that it tends to uh, be a little lopsided. It's very heavy on the top because the phone's weight uh, really does weigh down the entire thing here. So it's a little bit, I don't think there's any wrist strain, but it just isn't as comfortable to play as the uh, GPD is. The problem with the GPD though is that uh, because of its form factor, everything's in a weird space, uh, weird places here. So you can see the uh, L1 and L2 buttons are next to each other as opposed to on top and underneath each other. Uh, you also have the issue of the thumbsticks not being clickable, so they put these two buttons in here uh, to allow you to click the thumbsticks, uh, but it doesn't always work depending on the game that you're playing. So this is a much more natural uh, gaming experience, or at least a controller that's more configured for that. Uh, but I did notice though on the uh, phone here, because we are using a Bluetooth controller, that there just feels like there's just a little bit more input lag than I uh, detected on the GPD. So we'll go back into the game here and you can take a look and judge for yourself, but um, it didn't really, it, it's just minimal, but I can, I can definitely notice a slight difference in input lag uh, based on uh, the Bluetooth controller versus the other one. But we're able to get a 1080p video signal at a, a higher resolution and a higher bit rate because we have uh, the AC wireless and a device that can run uh, the H.265 protocol, which is a little bit more efficient. All right, one last thing to try out here, and that is iOS. We've got an iPad Pro 9.7 here uh, running with uh, the Moonlight app for iOS. And you can see it doesn't really have all that much consistency to the performance. So sometimes it's nice and smooth, and then you get these little moments of lag that pop in. I've tried a lot of settings adjustments and everything else, and just not getting it to work uh, reliably for me. So that's been an issue. Uh, the button lag isn't too bad on here. I've got a Bluetooth controller, but this is one of the Apple approved Bluetooth controllers. This is a uh, Stratus XL. I tried a couple of other Apple controllers 
controllers too, at least Apple approved controllers, uh, those all work too. The problem though with the Apple protocol for their game controllers is that they don't have clickable sticks. So you can't click the sticks. And if you've got a game that requires clickable sticks, you're not going to be able to play it. So unless you can remap those controls, you're not clicking your sticks uh, on iOS, which might be uh, kind of a deal breaker for a lot of uh, PC games that require it. So uh, iOS is probably iffy at this point. My uh, top pick at the moment is the GPD XD that I've been playing with. This one seems to work the best, even though its controller is a little bit weird with the buttons in different places. Uh, the performance on this has been the best out of everything uh, followed up by the uh, OnePlus 3 here and my uh, larger game controller. So that is pretty much where I'm at at the moment. I plan to probably use this most of the time provided I have a very good wireless connection. So where I typically play with this, uh, the wireless access point is like right over there. It's right in line of sight and it works uh, really well. But the second you kind of get farther away from it and your signal gets a little bit weaker, uh, this starts to falter. Uh, so then you switch to the OnePlus 3 and the AC wireless. So there's, again, there's a lot of uh, issues here that you have to kind of tweak and configure and then I uh, have to sometimes find your in the right spot. Now, I have some videos that I've done on game streaming in the home, as well as videos I've done on wireless AC and how all this stuff works. And those might be good things to watch if you're just trying to figure out uh, the best way to get everything configured. Because in most cases, for this to work really well, uh, you should probably have a wireless access point uh, in the same room that you're streaming the game to, or uh, hook up an ethernet connection, because those are always the most reliable way to go. So that's the Moonlight app. I'm really eager to uh, play No Man's Sky when it comes out next month. And I think my GPD here in are going to spend a lot of time together. I do want to make some disclosures though because we do have some things that came in from uh, different folks here on the channel. So uh, the OnePlus 3 was provided to the channel for me to review a little while ago uh, and this GameSir controller has also been provided by uh, GameSir and we'll be reviewing this uh, in the next week or so. Uh, but everything else that you saw in the video I purchased including the NVIDIA uh, graphics card powering the PC that I also paid for myself and uh, the GPD XD that I bought as well. So that'll do it for this video and this is Lon Seidman. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by my Patreon supporters. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash Patreon to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.